Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a short little knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Devo Knives Pony Stout, and this will be a White Mountain Knives exclusive set to release in April of 2023. So just relate that to whenever you're watching it. Um, I'll try to provide links for this right down below. Thanks so much to Devo Knives for supplying this uh, uh, review sample. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. This will come in either a black wash blade or a stone wash blade, but it's this color uh, of micarta, which honestly I, I like. I think that looks really good with either um, you know the stone wash blade or or you know the black washed one. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, the gentleman uh, behind Devo Knives. So make sure you follow him at either of these accounts or both accounts. Thanks so much. Um, let's go ahead and get a measurement of this knife. It's not a super ca uh, complicated design, so it really doesn't require that much in, in the way of a review. Uh, overall length is coming in at about six and just shy of six and three quarter inches. Uh, blade length is coming in at about 2.85. Cutting edge is coming in at about 2.65. How about, uh, some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat, uh, Model 2. Closer to the size of the Rat 2, but still a little shorter. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? There we go. How about up against the Benchmade Bugout? There we go. And then last but not least, we have, of course, the Spyderco Pair 3, which I think this most closely resembles. It's just shorter, right? Some, you know, some, some uh, similarities there. How's the action and who is this made by? This is made by QSP and it shows. Uh, the quality here is very good. Um, and, uh, you know, the execution of the materials is also very good. Um, just a, a bunch of little things, you know, like the it's slight crowning of the spine, right? A little bit higher polish on the blade. Just a nice smoothness of the micarta. And nice attention to fitment, things like that. It's very good. Uh, deploying it with either a reverse flick, a forward flick, or just a normal person wheel out is very easy to do. Access to the lock bar is very good because they have cut it right here. The lock bar is not sharp. And there's not like a massive amount of tension on it. It's super smooth, just really, really easy to manipulate. All good things there. Let's go ahead and do carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. It's actually slightly thinner uh, and contoured, which is gonna make some people really happy. Uh, length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3, shorter than the uh, Para 3, and uh, nowhere near as tall this way either. So really, um, overall, just a good compact size, not going to be an issue in the pocket for most people. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. The pivot is, as far as I can tell, a T8, but there's a little bit of room, and I'm going to... I'm gonna try the T9. I'm gonna try the T10. I'm, maybe I'm just stupid today. <laughs> stupid today, this is a T10 pivot. All right, sorry about that. And then the body screws are, um, they're looking like a T8. Yeah, I was just thrown there. Sorry about that. The pivot is a T10, the body screws are T8, which is fantastic. Uh, the pocket clip screw is also, I believe, a T8. Let's check that. Yep, it is. So, minimal hardware. Um, and, uh, you know, it was three on each side, I guess, but one of those, two of those are pocket clip screws. So, I'd call that minimal. And they're, the, in my opinion, they're the right head size. So, no issue there. This is a nested liner lock construction on bearings. Should not be difficult at all to take apart. Materials. We are looking at 14C28N micarta and a, a nested steel liner that um, has been milled out on... No, no, I'm sorry. I'm dumb. It has not been milled out on the inside, but that's fine because it's nested. That's great. These are the materials that we like to see at this price point, which I'm going to talk about here in a sec. Weight is coming in at three ounces on the dot, which is just fine. Uh, that's uh, very well balanced. In fact, the actual balance of this knife is right about where you're going to have your index finger. Not a, a super long ways back of the pivot, but it does feel comfortable, lightweight, compact. It feels balanced, right? There's no part of the knife that feels wonky or heavy. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness here real quick. 
blade stock thickness of the Pony Stout coming in at ooh, 116 thousandths, fairly thin blade. Nice. Okay, meat and potatoes time. Um, this is a smaller version of their Stout model. Uh, it's also, a, I believe, slightly, I think, I think it's slightly more affordable. I, I honestly can't remember. Um, but it looks good. This is a good looking smaller knife. Um, and I, I think most importantly, um, we have essentially perfect ergonomics. Uh, this is very melty, like these thinner uh, contoured uh, scales with the nested liners and the heavily chamfered uh, areas over here. It's just really, really comfortable. Every part of this knife is just a joy in the hand. You can feel the pocket clip, but it's a wire clip, so it, everything is, you know, really radiused. And while it's not my favorite shape of clip in the world, I really can't sit here and say that it's definitely a, um, you know, a hot spot. I like that uh, we have these different areas here for, you know, like like this little notch right here is just perfect for placing your thumb if you're going to do some of this type of work, right? I think it would have been nice to have some jimping right here, but we don't have it. That's not that big of a deal. I really like uh, knives that are this size and shaped like this for EDC because of this right here. I do this with my knives a lot. And being able to rest here in the choil area, uh, place my thumb here on top uh, of the ledge of the scale here and then put my index finger up on the nose of the blade. I don't know about you guys, but I do this all the time. So I really, really like this. This is one of those knives that's not a big knife, but because there is a really well-placed choil and, you know, just well-placed, like where your fingers are supposed to go, everything is so well-placed. It's just very, very comfortable no matter where it is that you're handling it. And, you know, couple that with the fact that it is just stupidly easy to manipulate um, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just a really, really good ergonomic design, right? And there's a fair bit of uniqueness here. Not like completely and totally, oh my gosh, I've never seen anything like that before. But, you know, you see one of these and then you go, I know what a Devo knife looks like, right? Um, but the people who have seen the Devo stout probably could pick this out and go, that's definitely Devo, right? Without seeing the pivot. Speaking of the pivot, I like that they put their logo on the pivot and they just keep everything else off the blade. There's nothing on the blade. It looks fine. The edge gets nice and thin down here. Absolutely. You still have a little bit of a tip, not like a drop point, but definitely still a little bit of a tip, but it is very, very thin. Uh, this will slice, it will carve, it will, you know, do your draw cuts, things like that. It's nice. There's a flat that carries out maybe 80% the length of the blade and then sort of a toucan swedge up top. That's honestly what the blade makes me think of. Um, but uh, yeah, there's not really much more to say about the blade. Uh, QSP does a great blade. They do a great knife overall. I mean, it, you know, it, there, it, there are a lot of things here that are just generally indicative of QSP's quality. And that's nice. It's nice to see. The micarta looks fantastic. I really like this color of micarta. I wish that we would see it more. I am sick of natural and OD green. I don't know about you guys, but natural micarta, it just doesn't do it anymore. Go OD green micarta. OD green micarta. Oh boy, right? Eh. Earthy colors of micarta. If that's your thing, that's fine, right? But I like to see these other kind of in between lesser scene. You know, we just don't see this stuff as often. I, I just think that th this is a nice color, whether you go with the, the stonewash blade or the black blade. It just looks really good. Uh, this is a knife that uh, has a uh, mounting position for the pocket clip on either side. So lefties, you will be able to enjoy this knife, even though it is a right-handed liner lock. It's still obviously very, very easy to manipulate, right? Uh, as, as I'm demonstrating. We have a, uh, I, I believe this is a, is it a titanium backspace or hold on. Let me, um, the, there's always one thing missing from my desk whenever I'm trying to, no, I think this is actually a steel backspacer. Let me get the blade out of there. Yeah, it's really liking that. It's a steel backspacer. But that's fine. Um, uh, the, I appreciate that there is a backspacer there. Um, I think what I like the most is the fact that we have the nested steel liners. That's really great, right? Uh, they didn't uh, cheap out and just do the lipped steel liners. They actually nested them in there, which helps with overall size reduction and weight reduction. Um, it's really good. And we kept the scales, you know, nice and thin and still had the contouring there. It's just a, it's a good way to do things, right? The uh, pocket clip is okay. I'm not the biggest fan of wire clips, and I definitely am not the biggest fan of clips that come down and pinch and come up and then back down again. Um, the reason is, is because it makes it a little bit difficult to get it in and out of the pants. When I say difficult, I don't mean like those stupid commercials where there's like some idiot spraying dish soap into a, a pot of spaghetti like they can't figure it out or something. No, I mean like 
<laughs> have you ever found it difficult to make spaghetti? You know, and then some idiot just doing, you know, introducing the spaghetti stick or whatever. <laughs> not, it's not like that. I'm just saying it gets pinchy. Um, so I'd rather it just come down and swoop up, right? But okay, it's not that big of a deal, right? It, it's not a grabby clip, um, but it is still steel. So if it does grab something, it, it, it could bend out. Um, it's just you're going to have to fidget with it just for one second longer getting it into your pocket. But it's okay, right? Uh, the stop pin is actually internal and attached to the blade. So riding on the steel channels of the uh, nested liner on either side. Uh, the lockout is completely and totally solid. Um, the lockup percentage, by the way, let's go ahead and flick it out like we normally would. Lockup percentage is something like, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 percent. Let's take a look at the back there where it's actually contacting it. Yeah, something like maybe maybe 50 percent, maybe a little bit more. It's hard to tell, but it's good contact, no lock stick, you know, no uh, pivot lash, extremely smooth, extremely smooth, a nice, more of a thud. Uh, but it is centered and with no uh, detent lash. So before, this is going to be a White Mountain Knives exclusive, um, which means there will be discount codes all over the place. If you're familiar with the knife world, you're familiar with White Mountain Knives, you know that it's pretty easy uh, to get a discount code from like anywhere. So before the discount code, these come in at 85 bucks. Um, and honestly, even right there, it's pretty okay but they will be discounted below that, which means they'll likely come in in the high 70s, perhaps even under $75, which would actually make this a budget knife. Um, this is really good. I, I mean, it's just, it's real straightforward. Reviews like this are really easy for me to do because this is a good design. The stout is a good design. Uh, the execution of this is good. QSP does good work. It's just an obviously good knife. Um, even for people who don't find this to be the most aesthetically pleasing knife in the world, I would say give it a try. It really is like the blade is so well done and has multiple accommodating features like for your fingers. It's just nice. This is the type of thing that you can carry and not think about, not worry about. You know, it's not like, oh my gosh, I got my fancy cool knife in my pocket. I don't want to, you know, it, it's a it's a cool knife and it's made well and it's, it's it looks great, but it's, it's a type of knife that you can just enjoy as a tool. I mean, it is really straightforward, a fairly budget friendly EDC pocket tool. And it's, you know, utilizing um, the best, some of the best materials that you're going to find, you know, in, in this territory. And, you know, I know periodically we still see titanium pocket clips and this or that, but 14C28N, that is largely the, one of the most preferable steels under the $100 mark, right? Alongside maybe 154CM and a, a Nitro V and a couple of others. Um, but 14C28N is extremely well balanced and is the type of thing that you want to see on a knife like this. Um, this was an easy review. Um, I'm uh, tentatively because I don't know what the discount codes will be. So I, I can't really say that this is a budget knife by my own standards. My own standards being anything that is seven, uh, priced at exactly 75 or less. Um, but I am going to put it in my most recommended knives playlist because it just is like this this is just a knife that's recommendable for everybody. Um, if you can get your hands on this, go for it. Um, I think uh, it would make sense in pretty much anybody's collection or EDC rotation uh, as a user or just something to sit around and kind of play with and just open packages with periodically. It's just a good knife. So that's really all I have to say. Thanks so much to Devo Knives. They uh, they gave this to me, so I will likely end up giving this away on a live stream. If you're not subscribed and you didn't know, I give away knives Pretty often, I think, is putting it lightly. Um, so, yeah, if you needed a reason to subscribe, then there you go. Thanks again to Devo Knives for supplying this for review. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And have a great day.